I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com, Chapter 20, in which we are considering process costing and activity-based costing. This is the final module on process costing, and in this module, we're going to carry forward information that we revealed in the previous two modules and look at assigning total cost to completed units and units in process. So this is actually the final step in building up the cost of production report. And so let's look at our cost allocation. And again, this is dependent upon recalling amounts from the previous module. If you have your textbook in front of you, you might follow along to see how the information is being carried forward as we go. Remember that we had 650,000 units deemed to be complete in the melting department during the month and we had calculated a cost per equivalent unit of $12.35. So this looks fairly complicated, but really it's not. 650,000 units at an average cost of $12.35. We're going to assign out $8,027,500 in cost. That $8 million we're transferring into the next department. Similarly, for our work in process, we had material cost of $9 per equivalent unit and we had 125,000 equivalent units of direct materials in process at the end of the month and $3.35 was our conversion cost per equivalent unit and we had 100,000 equivalent units there. And so we have 1,460,000 as ending work in process. It's important to note that our transferred out 8,027,500 plus our ending work in process 1,460,000. That is the total cost allocation of 9,487,500 that we determined that we needed to account for. That was the total cost that was injected into the work in process account during the month and very simply 1,460,000 remains in that account while 8,027,500 has been transferred on out. Now, the preceding schedules are combined into a, into a single cost of production report. The comprehensive example doesn't display well on the screen. It's a fairly large report, but if you look in your textbook, it's a combination of all of the components we've looked at previously. The unit reconciliation, the calculation of the equivalent units, the calculation of the equivalent cost per unit, and then the assignment of our cost to the final output, that is work in process and transferred on to the next department. Now, we would need to prepare a similar report for each department, that is each department each month would have a cost of production report, and those reports are used for inventory control, efficiency study, incentive pay plans, but they can also serve as the point of entry into our general ledger to determine that amounts are going into the general ledger correctly, very much like a subsidiary ledger account in that respect. And so let's look at how those general entries work. Here we're seeing that working process is being debited for $7,365,000. That is the amount from the previous module, the cost incurred for the month, broken down between material, labor, and overhead components. And then when the 8027500 was completed, we're debiting work in process. The next department, Skim Alloy, is what's being debited, and we're crediting work in process in the melting department. Remember from the first module how we showed cost flowing from each department to the next department? Well, here's the journal entry to do that. In the textbooks, I showed journal entries for each of the departments showing the complete transfer of cost from department to department. Let's look at a T-account analysis of what's going on in each department. Here in the melting department, we had a beginning balance of $2,122,500. We had additional cost in June of $7,365,000. Our total cost were $9,487,500, of which $8,027,500 was credited or flowed to the skim alloy department. Left us our ending balance of $1,460,000. Going to the skim alloy department, we had a beginning balance of $3,500,000. We incurred additional cost of $5 million, but we also have to pick up the $8,027,500 that's being transferred from the preceding department. And then $14,505,000 was transferred on to the mold extrude department. And here's a T account for the mold extrude department. Beginning balance, June cost, and the amount transferred in from the preceding department. Finally, $20 million was transferred on to finished goods. That's the cost assigned to the ultimately completed production that moves into finished goods awaiting sale to our customers. It's possible to do a fairly comprehensive schedule. This is illustrated in the book. It looks like a lot of information, but very simply, we've got rows for each of the department, melting, skim alloy, and mold extrude. We can see the first column that in total there was 7622 in beginning work and process accounts. We have the cost actually incurred within each department during the month for the 7365 in the melting department and five and seven million for the next two departments. So additional cost incurred were 19,365. 
we have the cost that were transferred out, a total of 20 million went into the very finished goods inventory, but we had what was transferred out of melting became transferred into skim alloy, what was transferred out of skim alloy became transferred into mold extrude, and then finally the transfer out to finished goods. So that's a logical $20 million amount. And then we have the final column, which is the ending balances and working process for each of the departments. So it's very important not to lose sight of the trees for the forest, so to speak. All of this needs to be very logical in terms of how much we had to start with, 7622 what we incurred, 19365 what we finished, 20 million. And so we had a slight decrease in our total working process between all of the departments to come up with the 6987500 So spend some time adding down and across that schedule, a foot and cross foot that schedule and satisfy yourself about the cost flow and that it's logical. Make sure you understand not only how to prepare a cost of production report, but how that data is being used to further the accounting process within the general ledger.